From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. In today's podcast, I sit down with Leslie Sim, and we talk about a product that she is co-founder of called Newsletter Glue. It's a product that allows you to create newsletters interfacing with MailChimp and other services from within your WordPress dashboard. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation that Wesley and I had. Hey, everybody. Rob Cairns here with Leslie Sim from Newsletter Guru. How are you today, Leslie? I'm great. It's the morning in Singapore, so I'm up and happy to be chatting with you, Rob. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I I was saying before we went to record, I really like what you're doing on social media. You're bringing a lot to the community, and it's really much appreciated. Super happy to hear that. Yeah, it's. Um, I've kind of... I started out trying to tweet in a more um, formalized, like scheduled way. And then I realized I like doing it chaotically. So um, at the end of my work day, I just kind of throw a bunch of stuff that I've done for the day up there. And uh, it's been fun that way and a lot less energy. Yeah, I'm I'm sure. I mean, I, I know from my standpoint, I actually don't do a lot of scheduling these days. If I can potentially avoid it, I prefer to to just kind of tweet when I feel like it or if I get 10 minutes in between a call or or a client and it it comes out a little more authentic and you know as I've talked to a couple of people in the community and everybody seems to love your tweets so please keep with, on what you're doing thanks I will so let's start with the story how did newsletter glue uh come to being and tell us a little bit your background and how you ended up in the WordPress space? Um, so my background is pretty varied. I started my career uh, over a decade ago um, to age myself a bit uh, in the government sector. And I worked there okay. for probably too long um, just because personality wise, I don't think I'm a good fit um, as a government employee. And then I moved into the ad agency world, and that proved to be a much better fit, and I really enjoyed my time there. Um, And then I went even more kind of left field and became a freediving instructor for a while and um, was a partner in a craft beer brewery for a while. And then I decided to move into digital marketing Um, just because when we were doing the craft beer, I was doing the marketing side of things and got really interested in how all of that worked. Um, so the craft beer didn't work out, but that um, led me to WordPress and um, digital marketing and building websites. And in 2019, yeah, so at the end of 2019, I got kind of sick of running my agency um, yeah. and I did the unorthodox move of firing a bunch of clients and um, started working on building a product instead. Um, At the time, I met my co-founder on Indie Hackers. Um, He had built a membership plugin and was looking to get some marketing help for that. So we teamed up and um, started working to, or well, I started working to market the membership plugin that uh, my co-founder Ahmed had built. And we realized really quickly, like, um, you know, we hadn't validated the product before we built it. We hadn't been building in public, so nobody knew us. Um, So when it came time to launch, it was, you know, who who are you? Why should we trust, you know, why should I trust my membership business to this new plugin? And we had all sorts of uh, super predictable problems. Um, And we were going to shut down, but I kind of, there was a, add-on that we had built to the membership plugin that allowed me to send my blog posts as uh, newsletters. 
Um, and I wasn't too sad about seeing the membership plugin go, but I was kind of sad if we had to close down and I couldn't use that little add-on anymore. And that was when I realized, oh, we could maybe pivot and make an entire business out of this you know, separate add-on. Um, and that was kind of the genesis of Newsletter Glue. And that time around when, because we had gone through all the mistakes of not building in public, not validating, um, we did it very differently. So um, right from the start, before we built anything, I wrote a long post on AJ Hackers asking people, you know, if um, we built a sub stack for WordPress where you can, you know, click a button and send out your blog post as a newsletter, would anyone be interested? And right away we got um, a whole bunch of people who were interested and I took that same post and I um, adapted it for Facebook groups and I posted it there as well and um, kind of built up a small, like maybe just under 100 um, list of people who were interested. And um, as I reached out, you know, some people kind of fall off or they don't reply and ended up, I think, doing video calls with about 10 people. Um, and just through that process, it made me more confident that we were on the right track and that people did want to use us. Um, and yeah, so we finally built it, we launched, um, and it's been going pretty well so far. Great. That, that's an amazing story, Leslie. I mean, we've all started different in different places. By the way, if you get bored with the craft beer, you can send it here because <laughs> I've, I, I've actually dealt um, in the marketing side, I've dealt with some beer companies before and they're a whole, they're a whole new ball game. So that's tough, but I, I really like how you, you took a product and you pivoted and you've stayed with it. How is your current, um, what's your current, if you, if you don't mind sharing ballpark and usage figures for newsletter glue, how many people would you say you have using it at this point in time? Uh, I think we have a few hundred users right now. Good. That is really yeah. good. And um, what is the one thing with newsletter glue that people seem to like the most, being able to uh, manage the newsletter within the WordPress dashboard, or is it something else that comes to mind? Um, so I think it's the the ease at which they can now send newsletters. So okay. um, a lot of our customers say that you know, it saves them at least an hour or more per newsletter um, that they send. Um, just because previously, you know, people were having to, they're already spending half the day in WordPress and then they have to switch over to their email service provider and reformat um, their newsletter or, you know, turn their post into a newsletter, um, change all the links, re-embed all the images and all of that was a real pain. And so, just being able to do everything in the same place has helped a lot of people. Um, and also just kind of doing it in the Gutenberg uh, block editor. Um, people seem to really like that as well um, because it's easier to use than a lot of the built-in email builders from uh, email service providers. And um, just in case people listening aren't familiar with what an email service provider is, uh, that's kind of the umbrella term for companies like MailChimp, MailerLite, ActiveCampaign, or Infusionsoft, um, which handle your email marketing. Yeah, the, and uh, that's a really good point. Um, I know, if I recall right, and correct me if I'm wrong, ActiveCampaign is one of the services you do integrate with, correct? Uh, yeah. And what, and having done a lot of active campaign stuff extensively, I can see where it would come in handy because I got to tell you, the active campaign built in interface is so 25 years ago. <laughs> and, I, and I mean that, like, I mean, the product one's fine, but try and do anything in their interface is like I'm looking at stuff like the year 2000. And it's one of the biggest knocks against active campaign is their interface is old. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think they've tried hard to put a new glass of paint over the existing infrastructure, but um, it's it's hard when, you know, you've been around for a long time and a lot of the stuff that you've built is already there. 
Um, so I can I can see how like everything is starting to look a bit nicer inside um, the software, but but yeah, like you say, it's a little bit old. Yeah, and and there's all kinds of issues with its responsiveness on mobile and issues like that too. And I just it's a great product. It it works really well, but I just I have a I have a tough time with that interface. Um, in terms of newsletter glue, what is the most requested feature that people ask you to build into the system at this point? Um, it's tough to say because we have a lot of different types of users um, and they all want slightly different things. Um, the thing that I can say is that the most requested integration is ConvertKit. Um, I think a lot of creators and bloggers use it, um, which are kind of like a huge market for us. And so well, um, we've, we've been talking to ConvertKit for a while now and they're, they've got um, part of the API that we need built. And I think they'll hopefully start working on the other part, either you know end of this year, which we're already at, or start of next year. Um, so I hope that we'll be able to integrate with them um, by maybe the end of the first quarter of next year. Uh, but we'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I'm in that camp. I wasn't going to bring up the convert kit issue, but <laughs> you did it for me. Um, I know I'm in that camp. I know uh, several other big bloggers. Like I know Joe Casabona is in that camp. I know yep. Matt, Matt Medeiros is in that camp. We're, we're all sitting there waiting because we're all convert kit users. And one of the big reasons is that's a co com combination of the three of us is we're also all podcasters and ConvertKit has some nice integration with Castos, which That's you know, right. kind, kind of makes our life a little easier. So, you know, nicely said, let's get with the program and get ConvertKit off their button <laughs> and let's let's get that done, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the team has been super helpful um, yeah. and I've been, like I said, I've been working closely with them. Um but I think like it requires quite a lot of work on their end. So, you know, we can just, all we can do is wait on our side. Yeah. Um, so just, with, just with Matt Madero. So he's already using uh, Newsletter Glue for his other um, project, the WP Minute. Yeah, he um, is actually. Yep. Yeah. So it's been, it's been fun working with him on that. Yeah, he loves that. And, and, and Matt's a really great guy in the space. I mean, he's one of, He's one of my go-to guys with podcasting help. So, you know, he's anything with Matt is, uh, is, is a great project at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, he was the first, sorry to interrupt. Um, sure. he was my first podcast interview. Um, it was, it was really nerve wracking actually to be on his podcast as my first ever one. Um, just cause you know, I'd been listening to his podcast before, before I even started newsletter glue. Um, so him asking me on was was a real honor, and he's been such a huge supporter of Newsletter Glue since then. So, um, yeah, shout out to Matt. No, no, no question. When I did my move to um, to Castos, he was a big help in the Castos team. So, yeah, he deserves everything he brings to the table, and and he's such a good community guy as well. That you know, the WordPress space is funny. Um, it's the one community I know where you can pick up a DM and send it to anybody. And it doesn't matter if they're a VP, if they run a company, if they're, you know, in the middle, people are generally pretty receptive of getting back to you. Right. So it's, it's yeah. a big factor there. So um, newsletters, let's just talk generally for a minute. Uh, had somebody say to me, the other day, why should I do a newsletter in 2021? And this is old stuff and a waste of time. What's your response, <laughs> What's your response to that one? Uh, I think my response is it depends. <laughs> um, what, what business do they run? I mean, it, it might very well be the case that they shouldn't run a newsletter, right? This particular business was a retail business. Online? Uh, online and offline. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, if they if they run an online business, then I think they really should do newsletters um, just because conversion rates for newsletters, I think, I mean, this is one of those public publicly available and often quoted stats. So I'm not sure how accurate it is, but I think people say it's like 80%. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw like these random stats out there, but I think people say there's like 80% yeah. or like 200% uh, more effective than other social media channels or something like that. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the thing is, I think once you've built, especially for e-commerce, once you've built up a large enough um, email list, when you have those conversions, when you have a sale, you can just kind of blast it out to your email list and that kind of guarantees you, you know, depending on your um, conversion rate, you know, anywhere between two to 5% of conversions. And mm-hmm. um, it, how do I put this? Like it, it saves your sanity because you know that like, okay, with any sale I do, I have this guaranteed um, conversion rate because I've spent the time to build up my list and you can't really say the same for other social media channels you know like with uh, online advertising for a while Google and Facebook's have Facebook has been um, increasing their rates and then with all of the privacy stuff it decreases um, targeting the you know the effectiveness of targeting and you just don't really know what your reach is going to be unless you've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars um, Mm -hmm. perfecting that over time whereas with newsletters it's going to be a lot cheaper Um, and yeah it's just kind of to me at least like a cheaper and like more guaranteed way to stay in touch with the audience when it comes to e-commerce yeah i would agree with you leslie i mean in today's digital marketing world, there's two things you own. One is your website and the other is your mailing list. And and I, I say that quite a bit to people. I run, before I went to record, I was telling you, I run a newsletter that's got about 8,000 people in it. And my open rates on a consistent basis are between 60 and 80%. If nice. you can believe that. So that's way above industry standard. Yeah. And and that's uh, that's come over time. I mean, it's it's things like managing your list, segmenting your list, uh, writing to your list, not to who you want to write to. People always got to remember: don't write for yourself. Write for your list. Write write for your potential customer. Write for your client. What what you want to put out there doesn't matter. So. Um, so that's what people need to think about. And I think products like Newsletter Guru just help people get better at writing newsletters and make it easier. And I think that's the whole key. One of the reasons people shy away from writing newsletters is it takes time, it takes effort, right? Um, yeah, for sure it does. Uh, just like any marketing channel. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is just getting into the right workflow. So if you had a crystal ball, (laughs) besides the ConvertKit um, integration, where would you like to see Newsletter Goo go in the next year? Um, So there are are so many things that that we are currently working on and that I would like to work on for next year. Um, So one of our big projects right now is moving our or rather redesigning our admin settings so that mm-hmm. it's more in line with uh, what WordPress.com, Jetpack, and basically like automatic um, admin settings look like. Um, I just like how, you know, it looks really modern and clean, super responsive. Uh, it's all built using React, so it's really snappy as well. Um, so that's one of the big things that we're moving towards and just kind of, making like the WordPress admin look more uniform. Um, I'm generally a big fan of that. I'm less big of a fan of plugins which look completely alien to the WordPress um, interface uh, with the exception of page builders because I guess like you have to understand that they they really are kind of taking over. Um, so yeah, with the exception of page builders, I'm not a huge fan of plugins who do that. 
who you know come up with their own completely separate UI. Um, so that's one of our big pushes. Um, and speaking of e-commerce, one of the things that I would like to do next year is have closer um, WooCommerce compatibility. So really basic things like someone can eat, someone can drag and drop um, one of their product blocks into a newsletter and just kind of have that look great immediately on email without having to do anything else. Um, so if they were running a sale, since we were just talking about that, um, if they were running like, you know, 50% um, off uh, summer swimsuits sale, they can just drag and drop, you know, five swimsuits straight into the block editor. Um, it will look great on their website and it will look great um, as sent as an email. And um, the ability to do that, I think, is going to be huge just because you can't do that if you, you know, if, if you are running your newsletter mailing list on um, anything else, right? Clavio, MailChimp, um, yeah. and you wanted to drag, you wanted to recreate this summer swimsuit um, sale, you would be spending five to 10 hours or maybe even hiring a designer or email developer to build these components um, and like make sure it's all responsive, make sure it look, looks good in Outlook and Gmail and all of the email clients. Um, whereas with us, if you're able to just drag and drop and just send that out immediately, um, you know, you increase your sales, you significantly decrease the amount of time it takes to build any of these new setters. Um, so that's something I'm really excited about for next year. Yeah, and we all know the complexities of Microsoft Outlook. It has a tendency to screw up email coming out of newsletter services like you wouldn't believe. Outlook is a is a challenge beyond belief and then <laughs> If I yeah. if I if I had a dollar for every time I set something up for a company that was primarily Outlook, and uh, I'd be a rich man right about now <laughs> because the headaches Outlook just doesn't adhere to standard HTML standards or other things, and they they issue a whole new pile of complexities, don't they? Yeah, we spent the first quarter of this year actually uh, optimizing for Outlook. Um, yeah. And that was super painful, but we we're super glad that we did it. And then we've actually also spent um, the past two weeks optimizing for Outlook again, just because we've been onboarding a really large client. Uh, they send tens of thousands of uh, email newsletters every day. They have like multiple newsletters, uh, multiple editors, multiple writers, and um, their entire company <laughs> uses Outlook. And so, you know, when if something on Outlook looks wrong like you're gonna get lots and lots of people complaining and and so we've spent the past two weeks kind of really perfecting um, how our emails look on outlook um, and yeah. and yeah so i'm really proud to say that i think we are super compatible with outlook and by extension um, all other email clients so emails breaking and, and stuff like that isn't really something that you have to worry with us too much yeah, congratulations on that one. That's a that's a big job. I I know I originally before I got into marketing, I come from a healthcare background and they were all a whole bunch of custom blocks with which you can use to build your newsletter much quicker um, and make it look cool. So we give you like author bylines, metadata, um, post embed blocks, and the free version doesn't come with that. So what the free version lets you do is if you have like a text and image based blog post, you can send that out as a newsletter really easily. And that comes perfectly formatted um, in your subscriber inboxes. Um, if you wanted to build something a bit more elaborate, um, you know, if you wanted to build sections into your newsletter or if you wanted to create a curation newsletter, add a whole bunch of links, um, you can do that more easily with the pro version because we come with like i mentioned the blocks that allow you to do that really quickly what is the uh, current cost of a license for newsletter group for the paid version um, the paid version starts at 79 dollars a year for a single license um, but we are planning to change up our pricing structure a little bit uh, maybe at the start of next year so that it's more, so right now our, our license is more, sorry, our pricing tiers are more license-based. 
meaning you get the same things, the same amount of features for each tier, you just get more licenses. Um, okay. But from what I've seen with talking to customers, um, it makes more sense to move towards a feature-based pricing tier. So depending on what features you want, uh, you get a different tier because, um, you know, for example, a large newsroom, they, don't, they only have that one site. So they're not gonna need multiple, um, multiple licenses, but they might need more advanced features in comparison to a smaller blogger who again only has one site, but maybe they need simpler features because they, it's just them. They don't have authors and editors and you know have to juggle user permissions and all of that kind of stuff. I would agree a feature-based licensing for me usually does better than a than just throwing more at the tiers, in, in my opinion. So I think it's I, I would tend to agree that's probably the way to go. So it just takes it takes a little bit of time sometimes to figure out the market and what the market wants and how they want it, right, Leslie? It just it's just a case of uh figuring that out and once you figure that out you can go from there. So Yeah, for sure. That's that's actually been one of my favorite parts about um building the plugin. Like yeah. um kind of like you say, like figuring out the market, learning what people want, um and kind of juggling limited time and resources with giving people every single thing that they want. That's so true. If somebody wants to get a hold of Newsletter Guru, I take it for the uh, free version, the best place to go is the WordPress repository at wordpress.org? Uh, yep. So they can head over there to trial the plugin. Uh, and if they want to get the paid version, they can head over to newsletterglue.com. Uh, the paid version comes with a 14-day re- uh, no questions asked refund. So if they want to kick the tires on the paid version, they're welcome to do so as well. Yeah, that That's really great, um, offering that guarantee. Do you, have you had a lot of people come back to you after and said, this isn't for me, or has it been pretty good? Uh, yeah, we. I think we've only had a small handful of refunds. And that tends to be when, you know, either it's completely not compatible. So we have some people who buy it thinking that it integrates with their email service provider. And then it turns out that they didn't check and uh, we don't, yep. um, which is nobody's fault, right? And, like, you know, sometimes that happens. Um, and then some other cases where they wanted, uh, they needed more help than they expected. And we weren't, you know, they wanted to have developed like a developer come in and build something really custom for them. Um, and, you know, we're a plugin shop. We're not a developer agency. And mm-hmm. so I think they went somewhere else to go and get all of that custom work done. Yeah, I think I think sometimes customers don't realize the difference between a, a plugin shop and a, and a full stack agency with a developer. And sometimes they, they truly don't realize the two are not always the same, right? So, I mean, that's that's the big issue there. Um, if somebody wants to talk to you, Leslie, and find out more about the newsletter, Guru, where's the best way to get a hold of you? Um, so, I'm really active on Twitter, as we talked about earlier. Um, they can contact me. They can either DM um, me or the newsletter Guru account. So, my Twitter is Leslie underscore pizza. L-E-S-L-E-Y underscore pizza, P-I-Z-Z-A. Um, or they can DM Newsletter Glue as well. So that's just at Newsletter Glue, G-L-U-E. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I check both regularly and will respond to you there. Yeah, and you and you are one of the biggest pizza fans I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw that out there. Yeah, you want to get into Leslie's good book, send her pizza. That was <laughs> Leslie, thanks for joining me today. Have an amazing day. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. It's been great. Yeah, thank- bye bye. A very special thank you to Leslie Sim for joining me on today's podcast. Be sure to check out her product, Newsletter Glue. It might help make your newsletters better. Thank you for listening to this edition of the SDM Show. The SDM Show is brought to you by Rob Cairns and Stunning Digital Marketing. For more information about Rob Cairns and Stunning Digital Marketing, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.info. 
From here, you can connect to us on social media, go to our website, and even go to the podcast to subscribe. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much. Keep your feet on the ground. Keep reaching for the stars. Make your business succeed.